738 here on a wacky Wednesday, man. Hump day, what it do, what it do. You tuned in to the Daily Dose on NRTV. We've got some fantastic stuff lined up for you each and every day. And there's something special near and dear to my heart. And you're going to absolutely love this. You're going to be so psyched up for this one here. I have made of questions. In the building right now, we have Tadi Rowashe, who's a producer and an actor. And Tadi's debut movie was, of course, Gonare Show, the movie, one of my favorite movies of all time, an anti poaching film, which won the best feature film award at the 2020 Pan-African Film Festival in Los Angeles. Ooh, I remember stalking you on social media <laughs> when that was coming out. It yeah. was absolutely amazing. And of course, um, you know, GTM was also a finalist in the 2020 Flickers Rhode Island US of A International Film Festival and was nominated for the National Art Merit Awards Outstanding Feature Film in 2022 in Zimbabwe, rightfully so. Um, GTM was selected for the screening at the prestigious Monaco Streaming Festival in 2022 and in 2021. You released the story of Mehanda. Yes. I built your website. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and Spirit Beast is actually based on the trial of Bea Nehanda, the female Zimbabwe spirit medium who led the first uprising against colonial rule in the country in 1896. Now, Story of Nehanda was nominated for Outstanding Short Film at the 2022 National Art Merit Awards in Zimbabwe, and other interests include conservation, really, girl, empowerment <laughs> of women and young people. And of course, she volunteers at the Zimbabwe all female anti poaching unit called Akashinga. The Brave One. Also founder and president of Ndine Tariro, which is I Have Hope Foundation, an organization that supports the vulnerable and young people to attain their dreams. Now, thank you so much for coming through. Thank you. I don't even us. feel like, I don't feel like this CV says enough about <laughs> what your compliments, or your compliments actually are. Really? Yeah, because you've done a lot. Oh, don't worry, we, we're following your social media. Better <laughs> check out the bio. Yeah. And of course, as you can see, at TC Tubo Studio, there are three of us in here. We have Steven Chikoso, who is a director in the particular thing we'll be talking about today. Now, Steven Chikosi is an accomplished Zimbabwean photographer and filmmaker and has garnered international recognition for his diverse portfolio of projects and exhibitions showcased globally. Now, notably, his documentary, White Yet Black, clinched the Best Documentary Award at the Silicon Valley Film Festival, among other accolades. What? What? People are doing big things, man. Mm -hmm. Because his work delves into the intricate themes of identity, heritage, and conservation. And he's also visionary founder of Short African Stories. Now, there's a trailer that you need to watch before you get into the core business of why we're here today with these two amazing, amazing individuals. Firstly, good morning, and thank you so much for coming here. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks thank for you having, having us. us. Have a look at this trailer. It's absolutely phenomenal. And let us know what you think as well on the WhatsApp number coming up on screen right now. Hashtag Daily Dose. We have a lot of questions, and I know you'll be made of questions as well as soon as you check this out. Have a look at this clip. Who is Anini. Who are you? Why are you haunting me? Happening. I am Zuberi. I came from the 15th century. I'm here to help you. How exactly did you get here? Time travel by a secret art called Blood Run. What you are talking about here will directly affect the timeline. Ever since I lost your mother and sister, I have not been the same. It's not your fault, Dad. I'm just glad that we have each other. You're only good to me when it serves you. You have a perfect family. It's not him that they're after. It's what he knows and his bloodline. You, the people that have your father are dangerous people. We have to find the Stone of Raza in this timeline before the Inner Sanctum does. We larger than the with these stones, we can create our own future. We can play God. The unauthorized jump you did could break the timeline altogether. It's the last thing I had in this world. Where do you begin? <laughs> I mean, where do you begin? One thing, first and foremost, 
Guys, what a fantastic trailer. This Thank is something you. that everyone is super excited to check out. Yeah. What brought this about? Now, this is um, two things I would like to ask about this. The 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 name initially there. Mm -hmm. I always I was always worried when I was, when I was reading it that I would have failed to pronounce it. <laughs> and then of course this is the Garden of Eden. This mm -hmm. is um, one of multiple uh, projects that will be yes. executed. Yes. Why that name specifically and then why is Zimbabwe coming into play with that one? Um, the, the, the main name, Alkebulan. Well, um, we chose the name Alkebulan because just a quick thing. Do you know where Africa comes from, the name Africa? Oh, well, you know, I'm glad you asked, but for the people at home, like, no, <laughs> let's remind them how that came out. So there's different theories. One of them is that it, we were named after a German or a French explorer called Afri African Rufus. And I'm like, guys, that's not okay that we are named after an explorer. So Alkebulan is actually one of the more earlier names of, of our continent. It was used by the Carthagin Carthaginians, uh, the Nubians, the Moors. So it's like an ancient mm. name for, for Africa. Mm. So I thought, yeah, this is, this is what we want. Right, yeah. right. And then coming through from a production aspect, oh my gosh, y'all saw the visuals. Um, what brought up um, for the angle that you guys are working with here, because there's, there's some um, there's time travel in there, there's sci-fi, there's a lot of mythology in there involved yeah. as well. How do you sit down and say this is what was well, this is the baby that we want to birth here as a concept? Yeah, it's um, I think where the concept of our Kebulan came from, and just doing the series of films um, for me as a producer and a filmmaker, I got really frustrated by the way um, you know the West and Hollywood portrays Africa, but I got tired of being. Mm. frustrated. I thought, let me do something. And I got an opportunity to, to go to Rwanda and I met some filmmakers there and I thought, okay, why don't we do our own thing? So I, I had this um, idea of doing a series of films with different um, countries being involved with each film. And so um, in that, I, I, the main thing was to, to try and just with even just the example of the, our name you know a lot of people don't know a lot of our history so the time travel thing was like oh wouldn't it be amazing to go back to like you know when Masa, Mansa Musa was there and to see because you you read all these things about how he was the richest man and all of these things and this was an African you know and so it so this um series is really about going back and forth and seeing like you know what what we used to be and the giants whose shoulders we stand on. Right, yeah. for sure, for sure. And if you're looking at it from a production aspect of mm. it, and as a director, this one specifically, we're talking about Garden of Eden. Um, the work involved to get the team together, the cast together, we're talking about the makeup, the photography, the, the location shoots, mm. how much work was involved in just getting that ball rolling as well. Okay. Yeah, it was, um, it was a very big project and um, it had a huge cast drawn from different uh, countries around Africa which was good because uh, that's what it speaks about and having you know Africans from different spaces um, and um, the process was very collaborative as you know film uh, is very collaborative and uh, for me as a director coming in from documentary moving into um, uh, non-fiction uh, I relied heavily on the skill sets, you know, that were available to me, that was made by production too. Uh, we had talents from Kenya, we had talents from um, Rwanda, we had ta talents from Zimbabwe, Senegal, I don't know if I've left any, yeah, but we had talents represented from all, all of Africa mm -hmm. and, you know, um, highly talented people uh, and working with those people, um, it brought about, you know, uh, what you get to see in the end. <laughs> now, the thing about that is that's a lot of people from a lot of places. The logistics alone must have been an absolute nightmare getting down and just getting everybody on the same page on a day-to-day -day basis and then saying, okay, fine, guys, this is where we are and we're in a good place to move on to the next stage. Um, there are a couple of different locations in here. Um, how many countries do you use to shoot this one specifically? Two locations we shot in two countries, right. Zimbabwe and Rwanda, but we had... Um, uh, so it's a collaboration between Zimbabwe Rwanda and Senegal. Senegal contributed a lot more creatively. Like our DP, uh, Director of Photography, or cameraman. Yeah, 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 that one. Yeah. Um, he was from Senegal. Our whole makeup department was from Senegal. Um, we have talent from Senegal. But behind the scene, um, the, the, the camera, we had um, people from Kenya, Uganda, South Africa, Nigeria, um, and then Zimbabwe Rwanda and Senegal. Right. And we're talking about the cast and crew. What what kind of age demographic are we looking at right now on average? 
for the guys that actually do the work on this one here? Ooh, it, it was quite vast. We had mm -hmm. um, some students from um, ALU. ALU, um, also from our film school, the, Zim, the Zim, Zim, Zim Film School. Uh, yeah. So we had like maybe, I think they were like maybe 20, 21. Mm -hmm. And the eldest person on the on set was 71, 72, um, our DP. Right. So it was an yeah. array. Mm. So guys were learning as well. The younger yeah. ones oh, were picking yeah, up some definitely. notes. definitely. Now, speaking of picking up some notes, I did not know that um, our graphics could actually go on to the level what we're doing, you know, with the magic and, you know, people with superpowers, etc. How did you guys come up with the way that we've done in terms of post-production and, of course, what you're doing on set? Because I know that even when we're supposed to mimic something live on television, mm. it's, it's hard to act. Yeah. But then when you're acting with something like sci-fi involved in it, or you're supposed to do some motion that's going to be added in post, how difficult was that? Yeah, again, it goes back to the talent that you have. You know, in post production, we had uh, Srinara is a brilliant um, um, film professional. <laughs> you know, he's um, very experienced and he came in, uh, added a lot of his expertise as well in, in, in the post production. And uh, yeah, just, you know, a lot of it is some of the things that you do before that informs what happens in the end. So um, having, you know, different, and we have these people in Africa, right, who are talented in different spheres, and having access to those, uh, it made the film, you know, much, much more <laughs> enjoyable. Uh. Mm. Now we know, we can obviously tell that this is going to be absolutely phenomenal and mm. a lot of love was put into making this. Um, what about the budget though? Because that's not like, this looks like a <laughs> high budget thing. Like, yeah. I don't even know how to even, Look, I don't even know how to factor in the cost of making something like this. Yeah, um, it was a lot of love, blood, sweat, and tears. Lots and lots of tears. Um, but yeah, we we collaborated with um, Visit Rwanda, who was one of our main um, partners, and then we also had like private um, uh, partners and and like uh, what do you call them? Um, well wishes, right? right? Um, but yeah, it was it was it was quite a budget. Right. Like I, and even like the initial budget that we had, ah mm. uh, yeah, I didn't. I thought I knew what I was doing, but I was really like I felt like I was really out of my depth um, in terms of like the the logistics and the the um, the logistics different countries and different currencies and you you need to take into consideration exchange rates right. and all of these things. Mm. But it was it was a it was a Good experience. Now you actually started it. Well, I do. You started it with a lot of other stars in there because everyone is a phenomenal actor. Um, without giving us spoilers, mm -hmm. what is the story in this particular Garden of Eden? Um, so Garden of Eden. Um, so this particular story, it's really about um, identity and the search for identity. It's a story. Um, mm, this question is always tricky because you always try not to give too much. That's the thing. But it's essentially a story of a girl who goes on this adventure um, to, to find her father. And um, in all of that, she, she, she I guess, re, re she's reintroduced to who she is. Yeah, because she's lost the sense of who she is and where she comes from. That really, um, I think as, as, as somebody who does documentaries, that really sings to me in terms of this Africa. Generally, when you're looking around the world and our Africanism and being, being just somebody from the country, or from, from the continent rather, we do lose that identity as we move forward holistically. Mm. Yes. So that's something that we're presenting in the movie? Um, yes. Um, it's, it's definitely something that we look into. Um, the, the beautiful thing is that we've got different um, cultures represented. Like even we, when we go like to the past, we, we show different, um, we try to go to the different um, people groups that were, that were there then, right? So we, we, we look at that, we look at how, we even have different languages um, in, in, the, in the dialogue. So Rwandans will hear Kenya Rwanda, we will hear Shona, um, we have some Swahili in there as well. So we've tried to really just incorporate um, a lot of, as much as we could in terms of the African countries that were that participated. I'm really lucky because I speak all the languages you just mentioned. Oh. So I, I will need subtitles. Kenya and Rwanda. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go with that. Now, to somebody who's watching it and they're not from Africa or don't live in Africa, what takeaway do you want them to get from this production? Yeah, well, um, it's uh, the fact that uh, 
because this project is done by Africans, you know? So there's a tone of respect. You know, when you speak about yourself, you speak with respect. You show yourself in a realistic way in how you really are. You know, so it's just for them to see how, you know, our own stories and mm -hmm. how we'd like to tell them right. or how we'd like to have them told, you know. Um, yeah. Because there's a narrative that goes out there on how these kinds of stories are told. And you're re reflecting Africa. It'd be nice to have Africans reflecting the story from exactly. Africa. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, it actually breaks my heart. I think the one takeaway I can take, I can give you guys that I, I, I saw when I was watching this trailer was the fact that I'm not in it. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you hire me? Have you met me? I could have been any character in this thing. Absolutely. I could have been the water boy. Yeah, our loss, honestly. I know, but you know what? There are more coming up. Yes. What kind of process were you using or criteria were you using to do your casting? Because I mean, someone took my job, so I just need to know what they had that I did. Well, I mean, we did an open call, so you were open to come and the audition. Um, but yeah, we... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, I think it was really just going back to um, skill level and um, um, people who who are passionate about the African story, passionate about um, be, being able to tell our story authentically mm -hmm. um that's a yeah that, i think that was really and it was actually quite beautiful there was on day one of, of filming there was a kenyan um who came to me um i think we just finished the first take of the first scene and i saw like his eyes watering and i'm like you're okay and he's like oh this is so amazing this is something i've dreamt about for many years because like whenever we i mean kenya is big on production whenever we are on production it's you know you know it's our other brothers there's a lot of them and we're all like you know uh, not no no like department heads sure. but it's so beautiful to see um all of us africans um in leadership positions everybody's well skilled um and being able to you hear in the different languages spoken and it, for him it was just such a beautiful experience and even though it was such a hard production a moment like that really yeah. just um, made it all worthwhile. Of course, I can't mm. even imagine how amazing that yeah. was. Now, for the amazingness that's actually this feature film coming out, it's coming out in, what, 10, 9 days? Yes, yeah, right. 9 next mm. Wednesday. Mm. How is everybody able to get a chance to check this out? Um, well, I'll let her <laughs> speak to so that. The, the, dates the premiere so. is on the 25th of uh, September, which is next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So tickets are available at Tech Tools. They can, you know, you can buy a ticket there to be part of the premiere and be one of the first people to watch it. Um, and then the opening weekend is at um, Seven Arts. Mm -hmm. Premieres at Seven Arts. Um, uh, opening weekend Seven Arts. So it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. For some, but Sunday it will be at night. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all day Saturday and all day Friday. Now, I know a lot of people will be in Zimbabwe or Narare, actually, and just be like, fine, we can make it, we're going to make it pop off. If they're not in Narare, is there going to be a time when it's doing a circuit around Zimbabwe, around the continent, of course? What's the schedule like there? I mean, is it set in stone yet? Or? It's not set in stone. So after the Zimbabwe premiere, Harare premiere, we're going to Kigali. Um, and then after that, um, we were going to do different countries. So if you are able to come from other cities in Zimbabwe, I know with Gonarejo, the last time we were able to do like a three-city tour, mm. but this time we were unable, we were only able to do, because we need to do other countries. Sure. We are just doing one city in each country. So if you're able to come through from your different cities, come and let's celebrate this very proudly Zimbabwean product. This is one of those ones you look at and you're like, this needs to be on a streaming service down the road. What is your plan when you're making um, these fantastic feature films um, in terms of rolling them out for international community so that it's easily accessible, easily consumable for the down the road? Mm -hmm. What's the plan for that? So we are in conversation. Um, Stephen mentioned um, Shinurai. He's one of our, he's a uh, producing partner that we have. His name is Shinurai Gonera. Um, and so he's in contact with uh, some streaming platforms. So that's definitely in the pipeline. I don't want to. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Let's not jinx yeah. it. What's going to happen? So let's just, you know. Yeah. yeah. So we're looking to to have that on on a streaming platform mm. quite soon. All right. So Stephen, on uh, yeah, we'll be, I should have been in this guy. <laughs> I don't speak more it. Um, but um, on a, on on. A, on the film aspect of it, yeah. in Zimbabwe, we're talking about Africa as well, but specifically Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. where do you think we'll go in terms of growth, in terms of the, 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 the productions we're bringing out, whether it's um, fiction or non-fiction? Okay. Uh, I think uh, we are definitely growing. We're in the process of growing. Um, 
we should just keep creating more, keep collaborating more, and uh, keep rallying together. Because when we rally together, we can create uh, more partnerships, you know, with the private sector, with you know, um, societies and that kind of thing. But uh, the main thing is to create at all yeah. costs. <laughs> I worry about the, the fact that, you know, Tari can wake up, right, and she's like, right, we're dealing with time traveling wizards. Yeah. <laughs> Work with me here, right? Yeah, and yeah. then she goes out there and she, she talks to Steven, and Steven's like, you know what, say less. I was thinking about wizards yesterday. <laughs> but then this financing issue, I think is one of those headaches that people have, or an excuse that people have in Zimbabwe, mm. that they can't find the funding to execute this concept or this script that I've got here. I mean, what kind of advice would you give to people like that? Because we know this, like you guys know, there's a lot of talent in the country, yeah. much less in the continent. Yeah. What kind of advice do you give to people who actually want to go out there and like pitch their, their script or their content? Well, I think, um, first, believe in the vision that you have because it's not easy you will knock 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 and knock again um so you need to believe in in the vision that you have and you need to have the end in mind um because anybody who's going to give you money is going to want their money back sure. um so you know having a distribution uh, plan is always vital um that's how you're going to make your money back um and, and it's different ways. It's not always just streamers. You can do different, there's different ways of doing. Actually, um, one of the things that we're looking to do is to um, have corporates to um, fund schools. So we've gotten a few corporates who've come on board already. Um, we've got some schools coming from um, Mabuku coming in. So giving different schools and different high schools um, experiences, a cinema experience. Um, so yeah, so there's different ways. You just need to be creative, really, because in Africa, and even more specifically in Zimbabwe, we are creative people. You mm. find ways, you don't do things the ordinary way. You yeah. find ways, you do things outside the box. So yeah, I'd really just encourage anybody who wants to, who's looking for funding, that you need to, to have the end in mind and be creative about that. Speaking of creatives, and you're mentioning schools, um, lighting that fire in somebody who is in high school right now, and then they get a chance to watch this and say, mm. this is something that was yes. done. And I, like you say, yeah. I just heard Shona being spoken in this mm. thing, I just heard being spoken in this thing. How far are we as a country in getting these, um, these beautiful films being accessible to people in the rural areas or mm. people in schools who might ordinarily not have access to this or might not know that the Zimbabweans can actually have the capacity mm. to get to this? I think there's room, a lot of room for growth. I think that, and this is why we've taken on this initiative to try and bring as many people who don't necessarily have that exposure to film, um, because it's not only about actor, director, cameraman. You know, there's so many things and so many um, sectors that are involved within the film catering. Like, if you can cook, you can come become like a chef oh, for a film. A <laughs> are you hungry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, catering, you've got accommodation, you've got like um, makeup, you know, that's it's a, a whole crew. thing. It's a mm. big crew. Yeah. There's so many um, skill sets that are touched. So, part of what we want to, why we want to bring schools in, is to, to, to show different opportunities mm. to children, um, to kids that you know what, you may not be myself. I was not academic, you know. Um, but if you're creative, if you're good with your hands, you know, we need to build sets. So we need like handymen, we need electricians, we need, there's so many things sure. so that the, the film industry can, can, and so many jobs that it can create. Now, I know we're running low on time here and we can never no. have enough time to discuss this. This <laughs> is so much fun because I've made up so many questions. And we have to play this trailer again at the end of this. Mm -hmm. But once again, the premiere is on Wednesday. Yes. Yes. And that's going down at? Seven Arts. Seven Arts yes. Right? And that's invite only or? Um, if you speak to me nicely, maybe you can get invited, but there are tickets for sale. Um, you can buy them at Tech Tools in Avondale, $50 a ticket. And then um, we are um, opening weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, you can buy tickets from Tech Tools as well, and uh, they're $10 a ticket. And are we dressing up? For sure. That's what's up. What's a premiere without a dress up? That's what's up. Like, Red Carpet across board, but it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. If you just jumped in and you haven't checked out the trailer, then you're going to check it out just now. Um, Steven and Sally, thank you so much for Thank you. Thank you, Captain awesome. 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 So what we're going to do is run the trailer again. Um, oh, I'm super excited for this one here. And all the bloggers out there and everybody who's talking about this right now, make some noise about it. If you want to check out the full interview, of course, check us out on our social media platforms, NRTV on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Ugh. Threads, wherever you are, like, subscribe, follow. Of course, on YouTube, the full interview will be there. Check it out. Get to know the team that's behind this. A fantastic team of individuals. And, of course, a fantastic feature film coming up. It's going to be crazy. Check this out, and we'll be right back.
Japanese. Nikon. Anini. Who are you? Why are you haunting me? Something strange is happening. I am Zuberi. I came from the 15th century. I'm here to help you. How exactly did you get here? Time travel by a secret art called Blood Run. What you are talking about here will directly affect the timeline. Ever since I lost the mother and sister, I have not been the same. It's not your fault, Dad. I'm just glad that we have each other. You're only good to me when it serves you. You have a perfect family. It's not him that they're after. It's what he knows and his bloodline. You, the people that have your father are dangerous people. We have to find the Stone of Raza in this timeline before the Inner Sanctum does. With these stones, we can create our own future. We can play God. The unauthorized jump you did could break the timeline altogether. It's the last thing I had in this world.